You know, I've got an old friend, uh, Kurt Wimmer, who's a writer that uh, I've had many sort of uh, connections with over the years. Scripts that we nearly did, scripts that we didn't do. We haven't sort of done anything. And it was, you know, it was an opportune moment where we connected and he passed me something, he slipped it to me. He'd just written it in the, in the, in the pandemic. Uh, and literally, uh, literally, it was a page turner for me. And uh, I was so excited. I said, we just got to do this uh, and we'll team up and we'll, we'll make this happen very quickly. Uh, and, you know, the, the, the sort of gods aligned. We, uh, we got David to come on board and Chris Long and Cedar Park. Uh, and it became something very special. We took it to Cannes uh, and the response was, uh, you know, it was really good because, you know, you, you sort of have a taste of your own, but this one we felt that, you know, it had a universal appeal. It's a, it's a, very, it's a very sort of a touching film, if you like. It's quite dark and it's a thriller and it has lots of things that can shock and keep, you know, the action fans uh, on the edge of their seats, but it does have a very strong sort of a, a very strong sort of meaning about, you know, right and wrong. It's about, you know, people, people that are vulnerable getting taken advantage of. And, you know, Adam Clay is a man that comes and sets those things and uh, of course corrects those moments. But there's a, you know, there's a, there's a group of people that, you know, this kind of goes on every day. Uh, and, you know, they're essentially they're scammers. Uh, and they, you know, they make a phone call or they send an email uh, and they, you know, they get people's uh, attention by saying that they have a virus in their computer or something. And, you know, they, people don't want to, don't know how to deal with those things, especially the elderly. Uh, and the elderly are the people that they target because, you know, they're kind of, so they live solitary lives. They don't have people to look out for them and protect them like, you know, young people do. So they, uh, you know, that's their first line of attack is to get their fingers into the bank accounts of the old and the vulnerable. Uh, you know, as their life savings go down the pan, everything gets, you know, siphoned out uh, and there's no accountability for this. It just goes on and it's, um, it's a terrible, terrible thing that happens in society. We meet him, he's at the beginning of the film and, you know, he's a retired sort of guy that just connecting with something that he has a love for, which is, you know, uh, making honey. Uh, and, you know, removing the honey from the hives. And he has this very, you know, sweet relationship with the honeybees. And, you know, it's the, uh, it's the parallel between his actual title of being a beekeeper, which we find out later on what, what, an, what the real version of a beekeeper is when we come to this sort of governmental kind of special society. Kim up and he's, you know, he's living in the garden of a, a very sweet lady that, you know, they have these exchanges of pleasantries every day and they they have a very sweet connection it's almost like she's the mother he never had you know adam clay is a we we don't know too much about him apart from the fact that no one ever took care of him so we we, we can fill in the gaps about his you know his 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 childhood uh and you know this is this lady is a significant thing for him in his life that she has deep meaning uh and when she gets uh, she becomes a victim of the, the, the cyber crime of the, of the scammers that take advantage. Uh, <clears throat> and he decides to get in front of that and take it all the way to the top. And as the movie escalates, uh, we get to understand that it's the, you know, the, everything is much bigger than we anticipated it to be. Well, I think the more of the mystery that we can retain, the better it is because when you tell too much about the guy. What we do know, he has an incredible skill set. He's almost like a super soldier that is there to protect society. When the balance, when society can't protect itself, he's the person, the beekeepers come in to, you know, to recreate the equilibrium. And that's what uh, Adam Clay really stands for, is one of these guys that doesn't really exist. He's a, you know, he's this, almost like this ghost that comes in and course corrects What's, uh, what's leaning to the left when it should be right in the middle. Rona is the, uh, the daughter uh, of Eloise, which is the sweet lady that takes care of me. Uh, and, you know, I live in a barn in her back garden. Um, and, you know, she makes me dinner and I bring her honey. And we have this almost like a mother-son relationship. And when Verona turns up, she's, 
you know, she's an FBI uh, agent and she finds her mum sort of dead in a chair. Uh, and I'm at the scene of the crime. Adam Clay is at the scene of the crime. And so there's a very, you know, sticky start for us too. And there always is going to be that because she's on one side of the law and Adam Clay is on his side of the law, which is the right side. <laughs> I mean, the law is the law, but when it fails, you know, there's very, it's, it's difficult to, you know, sometimes the law gets in the way of what right and wrong is. You know, uh, the, the protocols of what's allowed can be obstructive. So uh, Adam Clay takes the, the, the reins on that and, you know, what's right and wrong is very important to him. You know, I've been very lucky to work with, uh, with David and, you know, people like David are very rare. They're, they're an auteur, they're a, a writer, a director. Uh, you know, a, they're just, they have this, you know, immersive kind of obsession in film uh, and what, David does on a film set is is just unique you know he's he can change anything he wants to change at that moment we can rewrite on the spot you know he's there holding camera he's finding and fishing for the right angles he works very closely with all you know the DP and he's a very cinematic he's very photographic and most directors you know sit behind a monitor and you know they can you know call action and cut and but, you know, David's right there. He's, he's almost, he's, he's on top of you in that scene. He's holding the camera and you feel his energy. You know what he's trying to extract from you. Uh, he's, very, he's very articulate and he's very clear with what he needs. And it's all a man could ever want, you know. It's a lot of people don't have that skill and it's an innate skill to him. He's very gifted in that world. Uh, you know, the, he's been rewarded for his re writing, he's been rewarded for his filmmaking. And, you know, people are, you know, knocking down doors to work with him. So we feel very lucky that we were able to work together. And yeah, this is a very special one. Uh, you know, I sit here now, the movie's over. <laughs> uh, and I, you know, I, re I can honestly say, I, I, I've been inspired every day when I come in and work with him. The stunt team that we have has been second to none. Uh, you know, we've got a young guy, Jeremy Marinas, coming in with his team from the US. And, you know, um, we're trying to do something that is very visceral and, you know, very shocking uh, and believable. So we're not trying to do something over, overly spectacular in kinds of its dazzle. We're trying to keep things very real, very dangerous and very efficient. And I think that's what Adam Clay does. He, he provides efficiency rather than something uh, overly flamboyant in terms of the, you know, the fancy stuff. So we've kept it very real and very, very almost military driven kind of danger. Um, and this is all driven by David. This is his whole vision. He's the leader. We come in, we have ideas, but really his ideas are never anything other than great. Uh, and we just want to, we want to, uh, you know, exact those ideas. Part of this movie is, is something that would translate to any country, any, any family, anywhere, any person that would have heard of something uh, of this nature that, you know, it, once we set things in motion, we're, you know, we're off for a ride, you know, it's uh, the, these scumbags really get taken apart. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's the, the cause is, is so justified. Uh, and I think everyone want, everyone has a, an attachment to someone in their family that might have been, uh, you know, preyed upon, uh, be, be getting conned in some way. It's out there. And I think everyone in their life will have come across that in some way, whether it's within their immediate inner family or, or a friend or someone that has, has been, um, you know, has been taken to the cleaners, as they say. <laughs> Um, and it's not good. So I think there's a social justice to it that is, has a global appeal. All kinds of history to the, uh, the power of the bee. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's remarkable things about honey. You know, it's thousands of years old. You know, they find pots of honey in, in tombs that, you know, you could still eat today. It never goes off. It never spoils or sours. Uh, it has some amazing qualities. It, you can set it on fire. <laughs> yeah, there is, you know, the ways that, you know, the bees work. Uh, you know, without the bees, we wouldn't be here. You know, it's, um, 
they're a very special, integral part of nature and the cycle of life. So, yeah, we've learned a little few things about the bees. <laughs>